Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part one of my var args tutorials. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, and select begin. Let's scroll all the way down here to the var args part one. A variable length argument array, uh, basically var args, is a special kind of array that can be declared inside of a method or constructor parameter list. Var args come in very handy when you do not know the exact number of arguments that will be passed to a method. Specifying a var args parameter is easy. First is the data type of the array, then three periods in a row, finally the reference variable name. Just like any other array declared in a parameter list, the reference variable will point to a new array object initialized to the values of the arguments passed to the method. Now the structure for a for a var args array is like this. Uh, basically you'll have the method or constructor name, and then inside of the parameter list, the open and closing parentheses, you'll have your data type, three dots, and then your reference variable name. So for example, I've got a, um, a method here called party list and in the parameter uh, list here I've got a string data type and then three dots and then attendees will be the name of the array um, reference variable that points to the array. Uh, inside of that on the first statement I'm just displaying to the console the string literal number of people and then attendees dot length so you can use the, all the members that you would on a normal array and dot length is one of the instance variables that'll tell us how long how many attendees are actually in this particular array you can also iterate through it right so a simple for loop here and display the attendees to uh, the console there so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and come down here and go through an example. That's probably the best way to go and explain how all this works here. Uh, I'm going to highlight all this code, Control C to copy, or you can right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen, and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create, create one real quick, quick by right clicking, selecting new, and then shortcut. Type in CMD, next, and finish. Okay, I'm going to open up my command prompt here, and first thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by, and if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go the root. I'm going to make a directory with the uh, MD command called Java, and I already have that, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create one for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory called um, var args1, change directory to the var args1. I'm on notepad, um, var args1.java. Var args1.java is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste all this stuff in here, save. Okay, so I've got two classes inside of the source code file here, right? Um, I got var args1 with the main method entry point in here, and then I've got this groupings class here. And the first statement in the grouping cla groupings class is basically declaring a private string array called items, okay? And I've also got a constructor in here for the groupings, and here we go. We got our string data type and then our three dots and then items right so whatever's passed in here and that can either be um, a series of arguments or it can also be like an array um, so array variable right but whatever it is it's going to turn it into a string array right so that when I say items equals this dot, or this dot items equals items that will actually those are compatible types they're essentially identical right and that will store all of the stuff that comes in when this var args syntax um, into the items there. You can do var args in a constructor. Now it's legal, but you want to be careful. And I'll go into that in part two, of, part two or part three of this little mini series here. So, and then I've also got um, a method here called display items. 
and that's just using an enhanced for loop and that's iterating through the items array up here right and a string uh, string variable temp here right um, and that will just simply display temp to the console plus a space there with no print line and then at the end of that it'll print line and also put in a setter method here so um, so we can set this through the method or the constructor right, I've got the constructor up here so here is the set items and once again I've got a var arg syntax here string uh, data type three dots and then items and then I set this dot items equals items to go into there okay so um, up here in the main method entry point, the first thing I'm going to do is declare a reference variable here called group1, and it's a groupings object type, and I'm going to set that to a reference to a new groupings object, and I'm going to invoke the groupings constructor that matches string, string, string. Now you come down here and you're like, um, there's no actual like string, string, string constructor here. And that's, that's the beauty of the var args here, right? Because you can imagine, okay, in the past, before var args were introduced, I believe it was in like Java 5 or something like that, you'd have to have like a constructor that took like three items, four items, five items, six items. And next thing you know, you got 20 constructors in there, each one, you know, taking whatnot there, right? Or you got to try to pass it to an array or whatnot here. So with this here, the beauty of it is, is, um, we don't need to know how many arguments are being passed, right? But since we've got just a single um, string var args array items here, it's going to take apple, orange, and watermelon and go ahead and put them into a string array and assign that to our string array items, okay? So that's fairly simple and straightforward there. The next thing I'm doing is I'm saying groupings group two equals new groupings, right? And then, um, I'm invoking the set items method here and I'm passing it Tom, Jane, Bill, Mary, Johnny. These are all parameters, right? Don't confuse this with like say a declaration for an array which must, you know, if we did something like, you know, um, let's put this on the next line, like string blah equals and then opening, closing, curly braces, right? and something like this, right? That is not the same as this. These are just merely five uh, arguments that we're passing to it. We're not actually passing an actual array. That's something very important to understand there, right? It's the, um, it's the var args that will convert these five arguments into a string array, right? Because if I had something in there, like a, the number one in there, right? It's going to go off on an error, and I'll show you that here, because that's not a string type. That's one of the rules of this, this here is, you know, if you've only got one single var args parameter there, all of the arguments that you pass to it have to match that string data type, right? Same thing with the constructor up here too as well. All right, let's go ahead and save this, run it, and then I'll just walk through a couple things after that there. So Java C. And we're going to compile the var args one and Java C and Java to run it and var args one. Okay, so we get um, first thing basically here, right? Is when we when I call the display items here, I get uh, it loops through all of the items in the items array here for that particular instance, apple, orange, watermelon, then uh, group two dot display items, Tom, Jane, Bill, Mary, Johnny, and group three, right? Now notice I did groupings group three equals new groupings and with no arguments in there, right? And then I did display items. Now what it actually did is it built a, um, it built an empty array. So, um, I'll get into that actually in the next, either the next part one, part two or part three, right, on why you want to be kind of careful with doing a um, var args in a, you know, well, what the, hey, let's talk about it right now. So anyway, so uh, we'll get past these things up here. That's, we're setting the items in this method here, or we're setting them in the array, right? But when I do this grouping, grouping, three, group three equals new groupings. That is coming down here and it's saying, okay, we got no um, 
no arguments. But guess what? In Java, you can have an empty array. So it says, oh, okay. Uh, the var args um, syntax comes down here. It says, okay, let's create an empty array, right? That would be essentially doing something like, like this, right? You know, that would be creating an empty array. Now, um, what if I were to put a no argument constructor in there? Would that, what, what would essentially happen there, right? And I'm just gonna kind of touch on this. And no, maybe I shouldn't, otherwise I'm just gonna kind of confuse you guys, but just leave it at this for the moment there. That's how the, the var arg syntax works there. Um, whatever arguments are passed to it, it will go ahead and convert them into an array of that data type and then you can either work directly with it or um, you know store it to a, in this particular case I stored it to an instance um, array of string type there so let's go ahead and close out of this get this off screen and I'll just leave you with some final thoughts here uh, stay tuned for part two where I will go over the rules for var args and I will show you how to integrate var args into the main method itself uh, that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching